Hey, Chris Hagen here. I am in um, Elephant Rock down here in, um, I'm not even sure what you call it. We're around the Arcadia Valley, um, Caledonia area, and uh, a little a little something different. <laughs> going to get a lot different uh, right now, so it's going to start off a little bit different. But being a man, and I always tell everybody it's great being a man. No, no problem being a man. Uh, being a woman, there's all kinds of things. Uh, but being a man, you also got to know different things about women. And um, um, I'm, I'm being very mindful because I'm in control of what I say, but I'm not in control of what it is that you're going to hear. So I'm going to I'm going to pass this off to a Miss Jessica Fleming. How are you? Hi, Dad. I'm doing great. So it used to be Jessica Hagen, it's now Jessica Fleming. And you've got a business, and your business website address is? Hermoodmentor.com. Hermoodmentor.com. Now you know why I was being careful. Mm -hmm. Talking about women and their moods uh, is always been politically incorrect, and right now it's even more politically incorrect. Okay. So, as a guy, uh, I'm somewhat familiar with uh, the PMS syndrome, mm -hmm. and correct me if I'm wrong, that usually is going to last a couple of days before mm -hmm. a cycle, and mm -hmm. it's going to last a couple of days after a cycle. It can last into the cycle, yeah. All right. But it's mainly before. That's why it's called pre. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm coming to this from a man's point of view. Um... Never that, menstruated, that, this one. No, no, no. But I've been <laughs> massively terrified. <laughs> Scared to death. <laughs> I've been in bars with guys three times my size. I wasn't that scared. So then there's another syndrome called what? Premenstrual dysphoric disorder or PMDD. All right. Now, nobody, nobody knows what that is, though. Nobody knows what that is. So around one in 20 women, it's estimated, suffer from this disorder. Okay. Um, it's similar to PMS, premenstrual syndrome, but it's much more severe. So this is things like physical, but also psychological symptoms that really um, impact the menstruator or woman's ability to function in her daily life. Things like extreme fatigue, extreme mood swings, irritability, rage, uh, suicidal ideation with, um, you know, 70% of women with PMDD experiencing suicidal ideation, but 30% actually attempting it. So this is a very severe um, form of, it's not just PMS on crack, that's what a lot of people say, but um, that's one way to think of it as a much more se severe form of premenstrual syndrome where um, things like depression, also physical symptoms are involved, you know, cramping, bloating, headaches, um, heavy bleeding, things like that can be associated, but really what generally is harder for people who are menstruating to manage with this is the psychological symptoms. And, and we've obviously had lots of discussions about it because you suffered from it and were undiagnosed your entire life mm -hmm. or your entire adult female mm -hmm. life until until I was 28. It was 17 years that I was dealing with this. I was misdiagnosed as bipolar. I was told that those symptoms were just normal. Um, I was put on antipsychotics, antidepressants, various forms of birth control, which um, it's pretty dangerous. So premenstrual dysphoric disorder isn't, an, isn't a hormone imbalance, although it's very common for any woman or any, pe any person who's menstruating to have a hormone imbalance, just given the environment that we live in with environmental exposures and stress, but um, <clears throat> premenstrual dysphoric disorder isn't a hormone imbalance, it's a hormone disorder. So if you were to go and get your hormones tested, they would most likely come back as normal um, because that's it's not a problem with having too high of estrogen or too low of progesterone or anything like that. It's more of a sensitivity to the natural fluctuations of these hormones in your brain. That said, working on hormone balance is still an important part of treatment and integrative medicine protocols for PMDD. Um, but I just want to be clear. It's not, it's not a hormone imbalance. Well, it's, it's a, it's a complex situation. It's very complex. 
but 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 what's not complex is basically PMS is a couple of days before the cycle, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it's over. And guys, your life gets back to normal. Kids, your lives get back to normal. So everybody knows for the people who suffer from it. Uh, that there's going to be a few days out of the month that it's going to be not a lot of fun around the household, right? It affects everyone. That's and that's just PMS. Happen. Now, the PMDD is suddenly it goes from a couple of days a month that's bad mm -hmm. to only a couple of days out of the month that's good. It can be, you know, up to 14 days. So there are four phases of the menstrual cycle. There is obviously the menstrual phase. There's the phase after that. So after you menstruate, there's the follicular phase. That's when your hormones are the lowest. And then you come into the ovulatory phase where estrogen is ramping up. You should be feeling really good during that time. You're gonna ovulate. And then the luteal phase is when these symptoms present. And that can be um, up to 14 days. It's usually around 12 to 14 right. days. Not everyone experiences symptoms that long, but what happens and what I hear a lot from the people in the PMDD community is like, oh, it's like a couple of weeks of me feeling like myself and then a couple of weeks of hell, but then the couple of weeks of me feeling like myself is me cleaning up the mess and the destruction from the With the weeks, relationships. With the relationships. With, the, with their coworkers, with the people they love, mm -hmm. with the people that love them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying everybody that's watching this video is going to know somebody or fits into the category. Again, it's a one in 20. I'm going to guess there's also certain age groups. I don't know. Hopefully people don't have that from the time they're 15 to the time they're 50, but I, I don't know. Uh, but your website again is... Um, hermoodmentor.com and then I share a lot of free resources uh, through Instagram which is just hermoodmentor you can find me there where I talk all about PMDD, PMS, hormone balance and what you can do to uh, get to feeling better if you are experiencing any menstrual symptoms now it's normal to have um, mild symptoms here and there but it's not normal to be in severe pain it's not normal to regularly have to miss sort of event for a physical or psychological reason around your period it's been normalized that um having a period comes with pain but being a woman is not a pathology and that is just not true so it is completely possible to have a symptom free period i have experienced that multiple times after suffering with the mdd undiagnosed for 17 years um that was kind of an aha moment where it was like oh my god well, yeah. That's possible, actually. So, and again, Jessica's doing all this stuff, again, from the woman's point of view for another woman, right? We've had this conversation many, many times. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from it primarily from a dad's point of view who had this wonderful little girl and everything was wonderful and everything was fantastic and everything was super and everything was perfect and then it hit. And then we all know as a dad that, well, you're no longer a little girl. You're now a blossoming young woman and all that other stuff. Again, completely prepared for all of that. What I wasn't prepared for was, yeah, that ain't, I don't know her anymore. And then a couple of weeks later, it's like, oh, she's back. And then a couple of weeks later, man, I don't know who that is again. And a few weeks later, like, oh, what the hell happened? So there's that roller coaster on... <laughs> On, on behalf, there's a dog chasing. There's a roller coaster for, for the people in the, the family. Yeah. And when you get older, there's the roller coaster with the coworkers. And it's like, oh, we love this person. And it's like, oh my God, stay away from this person. And, 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 and that puts you in even a more of an isolated, lonely mm -hmm. feeling, which mm -hmm. I obviously, whenever, you, whenever you're that depressed and that lonely and people are running away from you at the grocery store and your family suddenly disappears yeah. when you come home, then, then the suicidal thoughts come in because there's there, you, you've now <laughs> nuclear annihilated, you've taken a flamethrower to everybody that loves you. Yeah. And that's why I'm so proud of what she stumbled upon. Number one, that you found it after searching and searching and searching. Mm -hmm. Doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor mm -hmm. after doctor after conversation mm -hmm. after conversation. They're like, oh, nope, nothing's wrong with you. You're perfect. <laughs> it's like, yeah, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. And as the man, as the dad, as the husband, you, you can't say anything because mm -hmm. it's going to come back to get you. Yeah. And now you can go to www.hermooddisorder.com. 
Her mood mentor. Her mood mentor. Dot com. <laughs> For premenstrual discord. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so again, coming from a guy's point of view, because I'm the guy, and coming from the girl's point of view, who's experienced it, it, it's just wonderful seeing the the progression because you're like saying it was 17 years yeah yeah and can you notice a difference in me oh no uh, it, 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 it's, it, it just breaks my heart hmm. it's just almost so like you were away in prison of my life. and um yeah here you talk to her i might say something wrong here you whatever mm -hmm. so have i noticed the difference it's literally it's 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 night and day um and and the the thought that you and all the other people that have gone through this, and this is nothing new, it's gone on from the beginning no. of time, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that there is help out there for you. Mm -hmm. Part of the help is, yeah, there is something wrong. Just mm -hmm. because somebody in a lab coat tells you there's nothing wrong doesn't mm -hmm. mean there's nothing wrong. You got to look at that, that uh, you know, all this stuff. And you actually do stuff on Zoom where you'll have different girls from around the country that will just sit around and talk mm -hmm. and then you know it just triggers and now you got to deal with that oh my mm -hmm. god when i was in high school i did that when i was in college i did that oh my yeah. gosh that's why that person's no longer my friend and it's a lot of trauma a lot of trauma around having it and, it, and what it brings up yeah and i do want to point out that um you know this was added to the dsm in 2015 so it is something that is kind of coming more to the forefront in psych in psychiatry and also in um, just in the medical community. But the, the problematic thing with allopathic medicine is that, you know, it's the medicalization of the female body. So if you go into your physician and you say, you know, I have PMDD and they know what that is or they're willing to to acknowledge that as an actual diagnosis and treat you, generally um, the only options for treatment are going to be SSRIs and hormonal birth control. So, you know, it's, it's the problematic thing from in my experience was that I was going to the doctor for 17 years saying, I have really bad PMS, here's birth control, here's an SSRI. Okay, well then finally I figured out what was really going on. Oh, this is it. And then the same treatment is all that's available here are SSRIs here's hormonal birth control well that's great and that works for some people and if you don't plan to conceive ever um, in the future or um, you're willing to, to try those medications that with understanding fully the side effects because there are a lot of side effects that's a great option for you um, to make but that's not treating a root cause issue that's causing the PMDD in the first place. So it's kind of a band-aid treatment. And also the, the biggest problem with it, in my opinion, is that that's all the options that there are. And if you can't take hormonal birth control because it can exacerbate symptoms in PMS and symptoms of PMDD, because again, it's still a hormone, even though it's not your own hormone, your body is, is reacting to hormones in the body and the fluctuation. So if you're putting a synthetic hormone in, you're, you're it's very possible that you can have a severe negative reaction to hormonal birth control, which is what happened to me. I became extremely suicidal. I lost everything in my life during that period of time when I was t taking one of the, of the hormonal birth controls that I had taken. I took numerous ones. Um, and then it finally got to the point where the, the reactions that I had were so severe that that was never gonna be an option again. I was never gonna take hormonal birth control again because I could potentially die. Um, right by my own hand so that wasn't going to be an option and then the ssris came with a lot of negative side effects that i already was dealing with with pmdd fatigue weight gain um you know depression still and so that's why i went back to school that's why i took the route that i did in integrative medicine because it's like yeah use allopathic tools they're there um and, and it helps don't cl close any off it, it can yeah, help potentially right. um yeah but there's also so many other things that you can do that are lifestyle and diet related um, that don't have negative side effects. And so, you know, combining all of your options and until I started using integrative medicine techniques to treat myself, I didn't have a symptom free period. I didn't heal my PMDD. Now, we're not looking for a cure when we're talking about these things. We're looking for an improvement in quality of life. So it's, it's not about I'm cured or anything like that. No, I still deal with PMDD and it's a lifestyle that I live to, to support and treat and manage it. But um, 
feeling like you have no options when you're already in a hopeless state <laughs> with the disorder is just not helpful and is not what people um, need to hear in the doctor's office. Um, and there are so there are so many more options. So I just want to make sure that yeah. hope is the is the biggest message in my mission and in my business is just that there is hope to feel better um there is a lot you can do with your own self-efficacy learning body literacy um and being empowered because you know i think another big part of what i do is is learning that symptoms no matter how severe it is your body communicating to you you know like your body isn't gonna say something's wrong it doesn't have a voice so it's going to present a symptom and that symptom is going to get louder and louder and louder until you hear it and if that means um you know getting suicidal getting severely depressed not being able to get out of bed uh burning all your relationships down that's a pretty loud symptom right. to be hearing and changing changing the mentality in your mind instead of being like i'm a victim to this um i don't have any control you know just feeling victimized by your own body is not helpful so creating a new language of symptom empowerment around these symptoms where it's like you're welcoming these symptoms because they're they're giving you a message of where you need to course correct and what what needs to be changed right. and so there's a lot there's a lot to work on but um so and again jessica lived it she went through it she's a woman going through her point of view me as a dad as a husband brother all the other stuff i'm saying to the guys that are watching this you know uh, PMS is like I say, just gonna be a couple days before, and it's kind of over. Not severe. But not severe. but but if it's severe, you do want to do the www. I recommend you do the www.hermoodmentor.com. Kind of read over it. There is no magic pill. I mean, we're out here at Elephant Rock. We're not gonna scrape off a little mold and <laughs> snort it, and it's gonna make everything go away. It is it is a process that that also doesn't necessarily. And Jessica. Thank you so very much. We're so glad. I'm so glad to be able to be around you and, you know, not tip a toe around. Have I noticed a difference? My God, it's just been absolutely huge. I, I can only use the term prison versus not being in prison. Thank you very much. Say something nice. Click like. And if you know anybody, hermoodmentor.com. Thank you. <laughs>